If this fails, they're gonna say you fail. There are choices and things that I decided to do or not do based on my pursuit of this, this dream. There wasn't mom and dad's money that was helping this yeah. float. You've been working toward something like, like this, this for, a very, for 15 it's, years. It's, it is do or die. And then this little thing called COVID hit. And if something goes wrong in three weeks, I'm in trouble. This is very much my livelihood. If 15 days had turned into 30 or 60. We would have been done. I'm Nick Freitas and this is Risk Takers, where we go behind the scenes to find out what does it actually take to be an entrepreneur? What sort of person is willing to deal with all of the risk in order to take a concept and turn it into something that is truly their own? And today we are very happy to speak with the owner, operator, grand, I don't know, field marshal, Field of Marshall. Raven's Nest. Yeah, Field Marshal. Yeah, right, thank you for the that. promotion. I would have gone with something a little more lowly, but I, I do appreciate that one. Uh, well, I mean, here, here we are. We're on Davis Street in Culpeper, Virginia, rated one of the top small town classic streets in America. Here's what we're going to do. Since you, since you have brought out four drinks before us, and since you've insisted that we not start with the alcoholic ones first. Right. So what, what am I starting with right so, here? So this is just a very classic iced latte. We've got espresso and milk. Um, this is just whole milk because it makes for pretty, um, it does. pretty it images. Looks, yeah. Looks, yeah. So cheers, salute. salute. Yeah. I started in hospitality at the age of 15. So I've been in restaurants at this point for 14 years. I lived in Montana. Montana is relatively low as far as regulations go. So I was able to, you know, bartend as soon as I was 18. I was able to serve at 15. You know, you could, it's, they, you could do a whole it's lot the there. It's the Wild West. It is the Wild yeah. West. And it was great. It was my first opportunity to like really earning income. What I realized was you, parents can't take away a cell phone if they don't pay for it. So uh, those poor folks, man. Um, so I was really drawn to, you know, kind of the financial freedom that that brought. So a lot of kids find, you know, sports and extracurriculars. I found work. I can't say I worked in hospitality the same way you did. So like I worked at a pizza joint when I was younger and they did what was really wise, which was put me in the back and just say, put toppings on this. Like, so I didn't yeah. do a lot of customer interaction. Yeah. There's a big difference between, you know, working in a restaurant and like focusing on hospitality. I found my niche in hospitality. I found the actual concept of practice, practicing hospitality and being welcoming and taking that really to an art form. So when, when you look at the distinction between working in a restaurant and, and really this whole concept of hospitality, like what's what differentiates the two? Really building relationships, right? When you're working the front of house, you really see very quickly the importance of relationship building. You want these people that want to come sit in your section. You want these people that request you that know when it's your birthday and they slip you an extra 10%. You know, yeah. these are things that really make or break your night. You're essentially your own little private contractor. So whether or not you own that business, you are in there and you can make as much or as little money as you want. When I realized you know, that I might be staying in hospitality was when I was a nursing major in college, fast forward to, to Florida. And I was very fortunate to get hired on at this really, really exceptional restaurant. And this is where like my ride or die for hospitality really came from. I had the general building blocks. I kind of knew what I was doing. I understood obviously that the building these relationships was important because it helped me bring in money. And I looked at what I was bringing home as a waitress and I looked at the $18 an hour starting wage for a nurse and I was like, I, I don't want to go down. I don't want to go down to making $18 an hour after paying for yeah. all this school. Switch to a business major in my head. I was like, okay, well, what I won't get stuck in are restaurants. Like I will mm. take this business degree and this experience and I'll do something else. Um, and I never did. I got that degree and I have been in restaurants for 15 years. <laughs> This is just a little caramel iced coffee and I oh. frothed some milk on top oh, just gosh. to make it a little bit Fruity. prettier. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said something early on that I thought was really interesting. You were working for somebody else, but you saw yourself in that environment hospital. You're an independent contractor. 10,000%. It okay. is up to me. The onus was on me. Like for me, the pretty natural progression came from like, if I'm this good at doing this for someone else, if I'm making, you know, the X amount gratuity on this check, but I'm making the owners this amount of money, like I want to be the owners. Like, like I'm ready to make a go of this. So, I mean, there was like a lot of trial by fires. Like I wish that this was like a happy go lucky, like, you know, <laughs> Oh, I had this wonderful yeah, experience. But, and, I was skipping down and then and all it of was, a sudden. <laughs> yeah. It was necessary, but like, Hey, you know, you're kind of forged in fire and like mm -hmm. restaurants are this like kind of like proving ground. What I initially was attracted to was actually the building. We have a great block of um, successful women. It was a pretty inviting area because of that and because there were you know, people that I knew and had contacts with, but um, I definitely was the youngest commercial building owner, um, probably still, but definitely at the time. I was you know, in my mid-20s and decided I want a building and just wanted a building. building. Yeah, I just wanted a building. So you know, it was financially the biggest risk that I had ever extended. 
so you, you've got your building. You weren't too sure if this was going to stay a coffee shop, but you decided right. to try to make it. And again, this is Davis Street in Culpeper. You're either going to make it or, or you're, you're not. gone and like. We also are like one block off of Paradise on Davis Street. Yeah. So if you go just one street over are your higher end eateries, but we are on what the locals kind of jokingly refer to as the dark side of Davis. <laughs> um, businesses kind of come, they go. Um, literally across from us is just is just, is just just darkness because the businesses that are across the street either don't operate late or aren't always occupied by businesses. Um, and it literally is just one intersection that separates us. So the location I knew was going to be a little challenging even though it's 500 feet away from places oh, that yeah. are guaranteed to do well you know so I knew that I knew that I wanted the building I knew that I could make a concept work in here so May 1st 2019 took it over decided to give it 90 days as a coffee shop before I really shook things up too much and it was just work this is a Oktoberfest very okay. seasonal and appropriate it is cheers just a nice draft wow. beer when I bought the coffee shop we had an ABC license a couple months later awesome it yeah. does well for us. That's really good. Yeah, it's hard to mess up draft beer. Right, yeah. You know, there wasn't mom and dad's money that was helping this yeah. flow. They weren't in a position to give me 10, 15, 20, 30, or more thousand dollars to kind of help me jumpstart yeah. anything. It was like a, hey, things really go badly. You will have a place to sleep and you will have food. <laughs> yeah. There's but like, a couch. Right. You can have it. But yeah. essentially, and so in, I, I sometimes feel like people are like, oh, well, if you do this, you must have a big safety cushion. No, the risk didn't stop at like, hey, I'm draining 15 years worth of, of savings mm -hmm. um, and income to make this happen. It's I'm doing that, leveraging that. And then if something goes wrong in three weeks, I'm in trouble. Well, what was that like? The, the first morning you wake up and you walk over to that door and you flip the sign and now it's on you. This is either going to sink or swim. I mean, yeah, there's other people that are, you have investors and people helping the whole day. We, everyone understands it's a team effort, but if this fails, they're going to say you fail. Right. So what's that like flipping that sign that first morning where this is yours? Um, you know, I wish I could say that it's scary, but it's not because there's no other option, right? Like the sign is flipped and it is now, it's, it is do or die. I mean, there's just, there's no alternative. So we finally were... Um, you know, cash positive in November of 2019. And then this little thing called COVID hit. Everyone kind of knows January and February are usually, they're, they're lost months, you know that it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. It was like, yeah. it's time to fortify the bank accounts because we know we're going into a slower season. Luckily yeah. it's not anything crazy, but <laughs> it's just not like, you know, yeah. It typ typical by bad March, vibe. It's not like there's going to be a global pandemic right, or something. Right. By really. March, we'll really start to see this stuff pick up and it'll be fine. The joke was on me. The writing really wasn't on the walls for like the mask mandates and stuff at first either. And it did progressively start to get scarier and scarier. And I was very much concerned about what was going to happen if we were forced to like literally shut. Like if they were like, listen, no, no to go, no anything. You just have to be closed. But it was like, what am I going to be like legally permitted to do? And then all of a sudden I was laying off my staff and working again and, and, and the working part was fine, but I felt like such a failure as things progressed, having to lay off my staff, but the, the sales weren't there. The mandates were getting trickier and trickier. I mean, it just, it was. It, if 15 days had turned into like 30 or 60. We would have been done. And I mean, there definitely were thoughts of like, all right, it's going to be like, we're going to black out the front windows and the front doors. We'll just go straight prohibition 19, style. Yeah. But and truly, and like, and yeah. not, you know, not prodding myself on being like a, a you know, flag against the, the you know, the government. But it, it generally was like, this is my survival. And I can't, you know, yeah. I can't not pay my mortgage. Literally, my focus was like, how do I make everyone whole? I mean, it definitely was a matter of like, you know, what, when is when? You know, like what, at what point would I realize that it's too far gone? What? I mean, you, you had to have that point at some where you're yeah. like, if this goes any longer, you've been working toward something like, like this, this for a very for 15 years. There are choices and things that I decided to do or not do based on my pursuit of this, this dream. It, it was, it was scary. There were definitely a couple of, uh, you know, kind of stand in the shower nights and wonder you know, what now kind of yeah, thing. But yeah. we limping along was, we definitely limped the whole time. Um, we were very, very fortunate at one point. Jose Andreas is a, is a chef. And again, back to the hospitality, he is a hospitality pro. He's not a, he's not a cook. He's not a, he's, he is genuinely in for hospitality. He's got this um, program called the World Central Kitchen. And they literally send, they pay restaurants to send out meals to the community. So we got contract with him. I was able to subcontract three other restaurants in this area under me 
I put out thousands of breakfasts. I had three other restaurants that I subcontracted to put out thousands of dinners. See, this is this, and, and this is what I. <laughs> that was again, the turnaround. Going back to this whole idea of how does the entrepreneur actually fit into the yeah. entire? Because again, I, I've worked at places, and I, I may I may have felt like a a you know a rational and an ethical responsibility to work the best that I could and to do a good job and understand that if I worked hard, my, you know, the business would do well and I continue to have a job. That's very different though. Yeah. It, it's still good. It's still, you know, but that's very, very different than, no, it's on you. Yeah. I felt very accountable. I mean, I felt very yeah. accountable to, to making this succeed so I could bring people back to work and get them back on their jobs and off of, off of unemployment. I felt very accountable to my lender to make sure that, that my obligations to him were satisfied. Um, World Central Kitchen is, was kind of like the glimmer of hope. Like after bad news bit, after bad news bit, that was where I was like, all right, we've got a lifeline. Let's make this work. I can give my lifeline to three of my friends. I would sell things like salt, baking soda, toilet paper, masks, gloves. And then there was a, a fire department crew that would come in and order their meats and stuff from us. So they oh, didn't have to go into the grocery stores. Yeah. So you diversified. And oh my gosh, improvised, <laughs> improvised, adapted yeah. and overcame. Yeah. You didn't just wake up and this was all like this. Like there, there is a ton of time, work, effort, blood, sweat, and tears, staying up all night wondering, oh my gosh, am, am I gonna have not just a business, am I gonna have a house tomorrow? Right. It doesn't do well. I worked so, so, so hard for so, so, so long. It was just, you know, pure kind of uh, conviction, determination, and like, you know, a little bit of stupidity probably in there sometimes too, <laughs> that I just really thought that I could do these things and I did. So what's, what's the word of encouragement? It's worth it. I mean, it's 100% worth it. And especially especially for me, I love being an employer. Like I love seeing, you know, my staff come in. I just I really love having like a team that develops and grows and maybe I'm not a nurse, maybe but I but I do find a lot of satisfaction in what I'm doing and what I'm providing, you know, to my community. There's six whole jobs that exist in this community because of what I've done here um, that would otherwise be doing I don't know what. And it just I, I like creating a home for talent. I like I just I like cultivating that and I'm I, I just think I think the risk I think the calculated risk for me has definitely been worth the reward and I really enjoy it.